as I have mentioned in the past, uh, during the uh, retreat in last year, last month, uh, I gave a series of talks on Mahasatipatta Sutta, but I could not finish it. And then uh, uh, people requested me to uh, continue and finish the discourse. Since then, I have been giving talks on the remaining parts of uh, four foundations of mindfulness. Friends, this uh, uh, sutta you find in uh, Dignikaya, uh, Mahavagga, and uh, this details uh, you don't find in other suttas, but in this sutta, uh, we discuss mindfulness or Dhamma, uh, starting with uh, hindrances, then aggregates. Uh, now we are uh, using uh, uh, six internal senses and there are objects and uh, fetters arising these uh, depend, depend, depending on uh, these uh, two factors like senses and sensory objects. So there are uh, uh, three stages which says uh, uh, meditator uh, bhikkhu knows eyes and uh, form that is object of eyes and then uh, the fetter arising depending on this uh, two fetters. And then that is first stage. One knows eyes and one knows eyes. Uh, object that is form as you know, with eyes we see forms, and uh, and then one knows, depending on the, in combination of these two, uh, sangyojana arises. What are the sangyojanas? Sangyojana means fetters. We learn hindrances, and now we learn fetters. Uh, hindrances are uh, temporary mental uh, obstacles. Fetters are deep mental uh, states. That means as long as we have fetters, hindrances arise. If we manage to overcome or destroy Fetters, hindrances will no longer be there. Hindrances will not arise. Hindrances obstruct our attainment of jhanas uh, primarily, but fetters uh, not only obstruct attaining jhanas, but they bind us to sangsara repetition of birth and death. There is the difference between these two categories of defilements. So, and one thing we must remember, I is not a fetter to the form, no form fetter to the I. 
so there is a simile given in Sanyurta Nikaya that is uh, if there are two bulls black bull and white bull and black bull is not the fetter to the white bull no the white bull is a fetter to the black bull but the yoke between these two these two are tied by a yoke together and the yoke is the greed similarly eyes and visual objects when come together the fetter arises that is what binds us to samsara so we say uh, we know the i we know the form when we say we know the i it is a very deep uh, it has deep meaning it is not the outer appearance of the i but the inner the factors that made up made the eyes of that is four elements four elements that is earth water fire air these must be balanced in order to make the visibility of the eye or the vision of the eye clear and that we studied earlier uh, in dhatu manasikara and visual objects there has to be light uh, distance uh, if it is too far we cannot see it has to be close to our eyes and the light must be there when these condition come together there are many other conditions when they come together then uh, vision appears when the vision appears vision becomes clear then if one of the fetters can arise we will explain this a num- number of fetters we first must know the fetters are uh, the belief in permanent self the sakkhaditi doubt and believing in attainment or liberation by following rules and rituals that's called uh, sila bhuta paramasa then hate anger and greed these five are called heavy fetters and there are subtle and light fetters they are desire for fine material existence desire for immaterial existence and then conceit and restlessness and ignorance they are called rupa raga arupa raga mana udacha avijja they are called upward fetters that is subtle light fetters so these are the ten fetters so when one knows eyes visual objects and one of the fetters that arises and then he knows the a fetter an arisen an arisen fetter arises and that fetter disappears and then it does not arise again so these are the four stages 
first one knows eyes, visual objects and fetus, that is one stage. Second stage is that unadjacent fetus arises and one knows that it was not there before, but it is arisen when it arises, he knows that. And then third stage is that it passes away and then once it is passed away, it does not arise again. The fetter does not disappear by itself. When fetter arises, the, we are practicing mindfulness. We see the disadvantage or danger of this fetter. For instance, the one fetter, the belief in permanent self, that is a very dangerous, very powerful fetter. We, are, we feel very, even in practical daily life, self is a stumbling block for our progress. Uh, that is what you call ego. Uh, self is called ego. In uh, Western psychology, uh, according to Freudian psychology, it is important thing. So he talk about it, ego, super ego. It, ego, super ego. But this is uh, harmful for our pro spiritual progress because uh, we feel very stubborn, uh, and uh, other people do not recognize our ego, then we feel very upset, angry, and so forth. So many defilements can arise because of that. Anyway, we see the danger of it and meditate on the danger, uh, how to meditate. This is impermanent. This is unsatisfactory. And this doesn't belong to me. This is not I. And so forth, we see the danger and then disappears. Once it disappears, it does not arise again. Now, uh, so these uh, hindrances, and these fetters, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this ten fetters. Let us see <coughs> when we see object. If the object, the, the these fetters arise uh, uh, sporadically, not in certain order. There is no order. Uh, when we see an object, if we delight the object, uh, tantalizing, pleasing, it is uh, the object that we like very much, karma chanda, or uh, sense desire rises. That is very natural. That is called uh, Kama Raga Sangyojana. That is in, in the list, it is the fourth Sangyojana. But they don't arise in that according to the list. They arise according to the way that they arise. So suppose sense desire arises. As soon as sense desire arises, we uh, reflect on it, see the desire, see the danger, and then it passes away. Or if the object turns out to be unpleasant, fatigue, vyapada, anger can arise. That also is dangerous, not conducive to our spiritual growth and practice. So we. Uh, 
meditate on it, cultivate our metta, and cultivate its impermanent nature and so forth. There are various ways of overcoming uh, anger. Or, if this uh, 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 we must understand, we, we always must reflect on the uh, noble eightfold path. We may not know all these things at once, but by practicing the noble eightfold, eightfold path, as I said, uh, first, number one, right understanding. Understanding of impermanence of everything is absolutely necessary. Greed is ignorance, impermanent. Hatred is impermanent. So if they arise, we must understand this. So this is a part of noble life for bad. Then then uh, if the uh, object turns out to be uh, unclear, confusing, doubt can arise in your mind whether you are uh, capable of seeing the object or object was uh, human, animals or some other objects, those things you don't know. Therefore, at that time, doubt can arise. That is one of the fetters. Uh, or sometimes you see an object which turn out to be uh, something belonging to certain uh, ritualistic practice. You see someone maybe walking on fire, uh, uh, you know, uh, maybe keep uh, lighting, uh, so burning lights, too many lights, thinking that they can attain liberation by uh, making too many lights, candles, lamps, and so forth, and there are many rituals. In the Buddhist time, there are many rituals, like people behave like dogs, uh, cook kura water, and sometimes they behave like uh, cows, like uh, go water, uh, like uh, goat, agya water, and so forth. People do all these things. When we see those things, sometimes People might ask, that is a very good, that helps us to reduce our ego, reduce our conceit, and therefore that makes my life very simple, humble. So if I practice that, I would be able to overcome my ego, and that would help me to attain liberation. This kind of uh, belief is called Sila Vata Paramasa. Believing in attainment or liberation by following this kind of rituals. They are called rites and rituals. There are so many of them. I don't have time to listen to them. Then, uh, sometimes uh, uh, when we see objects, I'm talking about seeing. That goes along with the hearing, the smelling, tasting, touching, and so forth, and uh, thought. Uh, say, uh, the, uh, 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 see an object, and then uh, uh, we might, one might think, I am the only one who can see this object in this way. I can penetrate, I can see uh, more details, I can create things depending on this and using this as a, this, as, uh, this as a model. I can create, 
So I am the only one who can do that. Others cannot do this. So conceit can arise. Uh, and then suppose somebody uh, hear a sound, and depending on the sound, the one might try to uh, imitate it, uh, create similar things, and then think that I am the only one who can do this. So conceit can arise like that. Uh, smell, taste, and so forth is a very, very subtle, complicated situation where any can any fetter can arise, particularly greed, uh, resentment, uh, conceit, doubt, uh, and uh, rituals following, uh, believing that one can attain liberation by following various rituals as I mentioned. So, and then all this uh, depends on ignorance. Uh, and then when ignorance arises, one knows ignorance is, is arisen in me, and then he developed this uh, uh, eight noble eightfold path, right understanding, right thinking, and so on, then ignorance slowly fades away. Ignorance fades away. Then one knows this fetter was not there before. It is arisen now because of my practice of the normal eightfold path. This fetter fades away. Once it is faded away, disappeared, it doesn't arise again. So these are the four stages of uh, practicing this uh, Sang Yojana, that is uh, fetters. Now, uh, and then there are high fetters called Rupa Raga, Rupa Raga, Mana, Uddha, Chavija. I mentioned uh, Mana and Avija, ignorance. What is Uddhacha? Uddhacha means restlessness. Restlessness can arise because of uh, remembering certain things that we have done incorrectly, certain actions, uh, or breaking precepts. Restlessness and worry can arise as a, as a hindrance. But as a fetter, there's a difference between hindrances and fetter. The restlessness of hindrance as hindrance, hindrance and restlessness as fetter. Because these two appear in both categories. In hindrance category as well as fetter category. When it arises in hindrances hindrance in the in the as a hindrance, then uh, it is uh, doubt about or restlessness of uh, guilt, guilt. When it arises as a fetter, that means when we are uh, practicing meditation, we are getting closer and closer to the attainment and then we get agitated, excited. That kind of restlessness can arise. Uh, so when we uh, see with our mind the liberation, we are getting close to the to liberation, then unerison restlessness can arise. As we calm, practicing concentration, metta, that restlessness slowly subsides and fades away. So first you see unreasoned restlessness arises and then you uh, 
focus your mind on Dhamma, then that fades away. Once it is faded away and disappeared, you know it doesn't arise again. All these four stages you see, even when restlessness can arise as a hindrance, and as a fetter. So it is rather subtle. And above all, the last fetter, friends, I'm trying to uh, put all of them in a capsule in a nutshell very, uh, in order to save time. Otherwise, each of them is a very big uh, subject by itself. So, uh, you know, when ignorance arises, all other unwholesome mental factors arise. All the suffering arises. When ignorance arises, suffering arises. And when ignorance arises, uh, influxes, asava arises. Influxes means asava. I mean, in first means in Pali, asava. In Paticca Samupada, dependent origination, it says, asa samudayo avidya samudayo. Asa nirodha avidya nirodha. On the other hand, when ignorance arises, uh, what do you call it? Influxes arise. When influxes arises, ignorance arises. These two are mutually supporting factors. And therefore, it is says, uh, ignorance itself is not the first cause, but even for ignorance, there is another cause that is influx, asava, asava. So when we see the uh, avidya, when uh, any sense arises, any object arises, as we do not know the object very clearly, there is ignorance. If the fetter arises like greed, as I mentioned earlier, greed arises, Ignorance arises. When ignorance arises, greed arises. Ignorance and greed are related. If there is no ignorance, no greed arises. If there is no greed, no ignorance arises. Greed is another asava. Kama sava. Kama sava. Uh, and therefore, uh, influx and ignorance are related. Uh, so none of them exist by itself. They also have their own roots, their own causes. So when we see the senses, sensory objects, any of these factors can arise. Whenever the factor arises, that is the root the the anchoring anchoring us to samsara the the function of fetter is binding together hindrances obstruct obstruct fetter binds fetter binds so binding is more durable than Obstruction, blocks. Obstruction you can remove and move, but the binding difficult to break. It remains very tight. And therefore, the, the Buddha put all the, all the factors, 
into these categories on the Dhamma. And this is one category of Dhamma, and which is uh, uh, harder, stronger than other mental impurities. And therefore it is called Sangyojana. Sangyojana. Yojana means it comes to uh, from the root yuj means binding, binding. So this is the section we have to reflect upon again and again and then we must uh, try to understand them and slowly when we understand we must at the same time try to get rid of them slowly and gradually. The most effective way is in, in effective way to get rid of it, get rid of the uh, fetter is that it is, we must understand that it is impermanent. I am, I have not emphasized enough the importance of practicing impermanence, understanding impermanence, realizing impermanence. And therefore, even though I mentioned it, every time I talk about Dhamma, I talk about impermanence because impermanence is absolutely necessary for overcoming all hindrances, fetters, and all other defilements in order to cleanse our mind and liberate ourselves from samsaric suffering. So friends, I think uh, uh, that's all I can do today. I might have not done a full justice to the subject, uh, really because it is so complicated, so deep. So in the Sutta it was very simple. It says in Pali, Chakuncha Pajanati, Rupercha Pajanati, Yancha Tadubayam Padichu Pajita Sangyojana, Tancha Pajanati. Yatta Janu Parna Sangyojana, Upado Tancha Pajanati, Yatta Chupana Sangyojana, Pahana Moti, Tancha Pajanati, Yatta Chupana Sangyojana, I think Anupada Moti, Tancha Pajanati. That's all you can find in the discourse. That's all. That is, you know, the senses and sensory object, depending on the on a fetter arises, and then unarisen, you know, unarisen fetter is arisen, and when you meditate, arisen fetter fades away, then you know, one step fetter faded away, disappeared, it does not arise again. These are the four steps given in the discourse. All others I detail I added in order to make it uh, as clear as possible. By trying to make it clear, I don't know whether we have, I have made it, I have confused you. But uh, if you are confused, that is not my problem. <laughs> problem of not understanding the Dhamma. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, unfortunately tomorrow uh, I cannot answer your questions because tomorrow is our Katina celebration from morning till evening. Uh, various activities are organized and therefore uh, I will not be able to meet you like this, but you can join my uh, cutting a talk at one o'clock. I give a talk that also would be broadcast like on Zoom like this, and uh, you can listen to that talk, cutting a Dhamma talk. Instead of morning talk, uh, morning I have uh, other uh, activities 
uh, uh, to participate in and uh, at one o'clock just around that time try to open the zoom link and then uh, you can listen to my talk at that time that is not very complicated like this very simple talk okay now let us do meditation uh, Okay. <clears throat> May all beings be happy and secure. May all beings have happy minds. Whatever living beings there may be, without exception, weak or strong, long, large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth, may all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere, neither from anger nor ill will, should anyone wish harm to another, as a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child. Even so, towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate for all the world a heart of boundless loving friendliness. Above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hate and no resentment, whether standing, walking, sitting, lying down, or whenever awake, one should develop this mindfulness. This is called divinely dwelling here not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision, removing desire for sensual pleasures. One comes never again to birth in the womb. With this uh, metta uh, thought in mind, let us meditate. We have almost 25 minutes.
By means of this meritorious deed, may I never join with the foolish, may I join always with the wise, until the time I attain Nibbana. May the suffering be free from suffering, may the fear struck be free from fear, may the grieving be free from grief, so too may all beings be. From the highest realm of existence to the lowest, may all beings arise in these realms, with form and without form, with perception and without perception, be released from all suffering and attain to perfect peace. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Sorry, Friends, sorry, sorry. I want to end this session. I also, I like to add to my talk. Uh, you might think that this uh, section on fetus should also be practiced while we sit and meditate, closing our eyes. Actually, in th this section, you can see very clearly that when we open our eyes, when we hear sound, when we smell, smell, when we taste food, and when we touch, and when we think, that means not only sitting meditation, but in any other sitting, standing, walking, lying down, talking, and not talking, and so forth, in when we are active, when we are active, these fetters can arise. Uh, not only just sitting and closing our eyes in the dark. How can we see object in the dark? Uh, you cannot. When you sleep, you cannot hear sound. When you are in deep concentration, you cannot hear sound. And so forth. In this uh, mindfulness practice, is not limited only to sitting, practice, closing your eyes and so on. This practice is very involved, active state of practice. That much I must, remember, I must tell you. Perhaps uh, uh, if you ask me a question tomorrow, I assume one of your Sami who might ask me this question. <laughs> Therefore, I wanted to clarify this in advance since we are not going to have a Kish QA tomorrow. Okay. With this, I want to end this session and have, uh, I want to share my uh, regular mm -hmm. metta. May all those who are in hospitals suffering from various diseases, may they recover very soon, return to normal life, and practice Dhamma, practice meditation, and attain liberation from samsaric suffering. May all the doctors, nurses, hospital staff who are helping these people uh, risk in their life, sometimes uh, sacrificing their comfort, May they also find time to practice Dhamma and meditation and liberate from samsaric suffering. May all those who have lost their loved ones uh, recently or remotely, may they find time to practice Dhamma and overcome their grief and liberate themselves from samsaric suffering. May all those who are in various unfortunate situations like trouble sports, war zones, wars are going on all over the world. I don't know what is going to happen to the world, going to end the world. Amazon is drying up, Northern Pole has fire, Southern Pole has green, plants and people are killing each other, wars are everywhere, and 
Therefore, before the world ends, let us attain liberation and end our samsari suffering. <laughs> um, Thank you. Bante can request the 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 Dhamma talk uh, release to YouTube soon, Bante. Description what? To release in the YouTube, Bante, the recording. So we can repeat it. Which one? This one, this one, Bante. This talk repeat again? Yeah, I mean in the YouTube. It, normally it is released in the YouTube, right? The recording. I think it may be YouTube. No, now this is Zoom, but normally it will be released to YouTube after a few days. Sometimes okay. pretty fast. Okay. I, yeah. I, hope, I hope somebody will do that. Okay. Thank you very much, Bante. If you like to do it, you can do it. Uh, no, I do not know how to do it. It has to depend on Bhavana to release it to YouTube, I think. Uh, let me see. Uh, okay. Uh, A few days after, right? Yeah, sometimes sometime very fast, sometimes slow. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think last Saturday, Sunday's uh, Q&A session wasn't up yet on YouTube as well. Yeah. Yeah, option. I think you know how to do it. Bante, uh, not... Bante, I know that the Zoom is recorded and someone at Bhavana is probably uploading it to YouTube. At yeah, some I think time. I... Maybe Bante Sadda is... Okay. It's normally, we do that. Okay, YouTube. Live on YouTube. Uh, now it is too late. Mm. Yes, Bante, but uh, I think it may be recorded, so yes. uh, someone okay. must uh, upload it. Okay, somebody will do it. Bante Sada will do it. Okay. Thank you very much, Bante. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bante, doing it on YouTube. Thank you. Thank you.